biggest stars. Yet that's exactly what he did, thanks to a string of multi-platinum albums, a high-profile marriage to fellow superstar Faith Hill, and Brooks's own inevitable decline. Tim McGraw's sound epitomized the strain of commercial country that dominated his era, updated honky-tonk and southern fried country rock on the up-tempo tunes, well-polished adult contemporary tinged pop on the ballads. Helped out early in his career by several novelty items, McGraw simply wound up cranking out hookier hits on a more consistent basis than any of his peers. By the late 90s, he was not only a superstar among country fans, but also a mainstream celebrity with a fan base of millions. Tim McGraw's journey to the top of country music has been an epic journey, and to truly understand his meteoric rise, we have to go back to where it all started. Samuel Timothy McGraw was born in Delhi, Louisiana on May 1, 1967, as the only child of Betty D'Agostino, a waitress, and Tug McGraw Jr., a star pitcher for the New York Mets and Philadelphia Phillies. McGraw is of Italian descent on his mother's side and of English and French on his father's side. In 1966, Tug was a pitcher for the Jacksonville Suns, and he lived in an apartment above Betty D'Agostino, who attended Terry Parker High School. The pair had a relationship, and when Betty became pregnant, her parents sent her to Louisiana to live with relatives and to raise the baby. Raised by his mother in Start, east of Monroe, McGraw grew up believing his stepfather, Horace Smith, was his father. Tim McGraw's stepdad married his mom when Tim was only seven months old, and he was always led to believe that that was his, in fact, biological father. From the time of his mother's marriage until the time he met his biological father, his last name was Smith. At age 11, McGraw discovered his birth certificate while searching his mother's closet to look for Christmas presents. Tim confronted his mother with this information and she confessed, yes, in fact, she'd had a fling with this baseball player when he was living in an apartment upstairs in Jacksonville, Florida, and he didn't want anything to do with the baby, so she moved on, remarried, and raised him that way. What's extraordinary is the fact that, first of all, Tim actually had a baseball card of Tug McGraw on his wall at the time, not knowing that that was his dad. But also, Tim happened to be extremely good at baseball himself. He used to play baseball quite a bit, so it's really interesting that those genes were uh, playing such an important part. But then he ended up going to music, and he's given us quite a lot of good stuff, so I think a good decision there. After his discovery, his mother took Tim to meet Tug McGraw for the first time. For seven years, Tug denied being Tim's father. At that time, he'd already remarried, had a new family, and didn't want to acknowledge his illegitimate son. And he, and he really was a bit heartless about the whole thing. Tug McGraw wouldn't admit that he was the dad. He denied it. And it was only as Tim started to look more and more like him that actually it couldn't be denied anymore. Uh, but actually, it, things ended really well. They got on really, really well. They became really close. And what could have ended up being a relationship that didn't exist, it turned into something really nice. 
the impact of, of Tim McGraw growing up and, and finding out that his dad was not his dad, the impact of that on Tim McGraw was massive, had a lot to do with shaping the man that he would become. He has, he had, and still has a great relationship with his stepfather. Uh, he considers him his dad. Um, and in fact, a lot of Tim's early interest in country music can be traced to his stepfather because he was a truck driver. So Tim was often in the truck listening to country music. George Strait, for example, he heard over and over. And he heard those songs very much as part of his childhood. They very much um, affected him and increased his interest. And potentially, one of the main reasons he ended up becoming a country singer himself. So both his biological dad and his father he grew up with had a great influence on Tim McGraw. But I also think that uh, for an 11 year old to find out that his dad is not really his dad would have been a very traumatic, uh, painful situation. And I think some of that you can hear later on in the lyrics of some of Tim's songs. During his college years, he learned to play guitar and would frequently perform and sing for tips, although he claims his roommates often hit the guitar because he was so bad. His mother, Betty, returned to Jacksonville, Florida in 1987, and Tim followed. He attended Florida Community College at Jacksonville for one term and occasionally sat in with local bands. In 1989, on the day his hero Keith Whitley died, McGraw dropped out of college to head to Nashville and pursue a musical career. So Tim was really good at two things, baseball and country music. And when he decided that he was going to move to Nashville and pursue this country career, he told his mother, who said that she was surprised he hadn't done it earlier, which I think is a pretty good endorsement. Anybody that wants to be a country singer has to come through Nashville. You don't, you don't have to always live in Nashville once you've become a successful country singer, but it's almost impossible to do it without living here at some point. I get asked all the time by aspiring artists, should I move to Nashville? And some people, well, George Strait never moved to Nashville, you know. It can happen and does happen outside of Nashville. But my personal philosophy is if you want to hunt tigers, you go to the jungle and this is the jungle and i think in particular that's true if you're a writer because if you want to learn the craft of country songwriting this is the this is the school right here this is the university this is the graduate level learning program as far as what nashville does for an artist you know this is nashville is where the talent is centralized you've got more, especially if you're into country, you've got more songwriters here than you've got anywhere else. The record labels are here, the producers are here, the other singers are here, the whole industry is here. And so if you want to start meeting the people that you need to know to put together a successful team to make you the kind of star that you want to be, you got to be in Nashville. <laughs>